Hello, and welcome to the first in a series of instructional videos on hand-to-hand -hand combat training. My name is Michael M. Foley. I have created this uh, system, hand-to-hand -hand combat training systems, to give the average person a chance to learn self-defense here in my training center or in distance learning uh, as we're doing here on this video. Give you a little history about myself. I have been involved in martial arts since I was uh, probably about seventh grade and I've been training in martial arts ever since. I have studied many different martial arts. I have uh, black ranks, black belt ranks in, uh, in several, uh, about three different styles of karate and taekwondo, judo, jiu-jitsu, aikido. I was a competition kickboxer for many years and I've taken all that knowledge and I've uh, comprised it. I've, I've taken what I think is useful. Okay, we've all seen different types of martial arts out there. Um, some of it is traditional and so they keep it. In modern combat, a lot of that isn't really applicable. So I've taken what I think is the most useful type of techniques out of the karate, the blocks and the strikes and the punches and the kicks and using takedowns from judo and jiu-jitsu and aikido and uh, throwing in techniques uh, from the, the kickboxing all into one system. So what we're learning here is a compilation of martial arts techniques. I have been involved with the military for 30 years, more than 30 years, and I have been instructing the military for that entire time. When I joined, I was already a high level brown, not quite black, and I opened up, I had my own um, club in Hawaii where I was stationed. Soldiers were coming to that and we trained really hard. I opened it up for dependents, for children and wives that come in. They trained really hard and I discovered a lot of things about what works and what doesn't work. Uh, working with the Army, I was uh, working in a CID capacity with the military police and had to use this, had to use the skills. They were interested in me for the job because of my martial arts skills. So because of that, it gave me the opportunity that a lot of people don't get to really try battle-tested techniques or come up with battle-tested techniques. So that's what we're offering here. We uh, are uh, not only teaching here at the center, but with the instructional videos, we are now actually teaching across the world. I personally have taught in places like Macedonia and Kosovo and Korea and Japan. I've uh, been all over the place and I have been teaching uh, either hand-to-hand -hand combat or the, my umbrella system called Kodian Khan Martial Arts. The layout of this particular video, as you go through this as a student, we go step-by-step -step instruction. I will take you through each little part and if I think there's something important uh, in a technique like a hand position, then we're, we're going to try to get the camera and do a close up so you can really see what the hand is doing. So there's going to be places for that in here as well. Uh, we do what we call a dry run method in the beginning. Dry run just simply means that we're practicing without a, an opponent, without a partner. So if we're doing a technique like I might do a uh, block into a strike, you know, do a block here and strike here. All right, that's to teach you how to do that technique step by step, okay, in the simplest way possible. Then you learn how to apply it with your partner. So on the video, we show you that as well. I have another instructor here with me um, at that point who will do the technique when I attack. Then we show you what we call combat speed. Combat speed is very important. This is to give you a goal. When you look at that, don't try to do it that speed right off the bat because somebody's going to get hurt. You have to learn control. You have to learn the technique. Then you learn to apply it at the combat speed. All right, so that, that application on the video is for your personal goal. You watch that and you go, okay, that's what I've got to get to. We work in a uh, military type training method. It's called crawl, walk, run. All right. All the military schools that I've ever been to, we start out slow, very concentrated effort on it. Then you move to the next step, which is that walk phase. Okay. So from the crawl to the walk, 
Walk means that you're going through it at a fairly normal pace, then finally get to that run phase, or as we call it, the combat speed phase. Um, go through this entire video. Learn everything on it. Train on it over and over and over. After a few months, I would say probably six months or more of good training, what we need you to do is to take a video of yourself doing the techniques on a partner. Okay, we don't need to see all the basic blocks and the, the basic stripes. We want to see you do all of the partner techniques with an opponent. And show it to us at two speeds. Okay, we want to see it at a normal speed and I want to see it at combat speed. When you get that video done, you mail it to me. I will look at it, I will view it, and I will evaluate you, and I will actually write down comments. Now, if I think that you did it well enough to pass level one certification, you will receive a certificate in the mail that says you have completed level one certification. You need that before you can even order the second video, okay, the level two training video. All right, so keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> We are also creating supplemental DVDs. All right, now these videos, the supplemental videos are to add to what you've already learned. If you have a very, if you have a basic technique, somebody is trying to strike you, you learn to block, strike, knee. In the supplemental video, we will show you follow-ups beyond that. We will also show some things instead of a two-hand grab or choke, it's a single hand grab to your shirt or single hand grab around your throat. And how to use the same technique in a little different application. So the supplemental is really, really um, an important video to get. So you need to, again, finish your initial level one video, then you can go ahead and order the supplemental. All right. So. With all of that in mind, this is level one hand-to-hand -hand combat training, and good luck in your training. As we go through the training, be aware that you need to first make sure that you are physically capable of doing this training. So check with your doctor first to make sure that you can do this. Also. If you follow our training step by step exactly the way we're telling you, then you should not receive any injuries. So don't go getting all crazy and practicing too hard or doing something with your partner that you shouldn't do and causing injuries to each other. You want to practice it for real, but don't practice it real on your partner. thing we'll cover today are blocks. Now when you're doing your blocks, I want you to get used to having an operational box. All right, this box is the zone where the enemy is trying to throw their punch or their blow or whatever, grab you, choke you, whatever they're doing with their hands to attack you. So build this little box that's right around the top of your head, out to the edges, by your ears, and down past your throat. This is what they're going to be going for. The first block. This is called a rising block. Now watch how that block covers the zone I was just talking about. It comes under and up. Make sure that you're starting here, coming under your face and up. Too many people end up in the right place, but they got there the wrong way. So don't bring it around. Use your arm to come under your face and block upward. It's moving the striking uh, fist or arm, whatever, up and away, out of range. So it's from here, blocking up, back down, block up, back down, block up. All right, that's called rising block. Now, when you see the angle, that's to show you that the fist isn't right over the top of your head. A lot of people try to do it this way. Don't do that. Block out here. You always want your blocking arm between you and the bad guy. So think about walking up, but well enough out in front of you that you're getting to that punch or, or strike of some kind before it gets too close to you, the target. 
So block up. All right. We're going to do something here. I want you to face the same direction with me so that you can practice with me on this block. So we're facing here. Bringing the block right up and hold it there and bring it right back down. Here we go. And one block, bring it down. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Good job. Now, switch your side. We got the other foot back. The right hand is now the front hand, the lead hand. <clears throat> That's the hand we're going to use to do the block. So from here, ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. That's the rising block. Look at the arm position in relationship to the punch. Coming under the arm, locking upward. Okay, that's the rising block. Next block I want to go into is called the inward block. Once again, I'll keep referring back to this this box or this zone that you need to block, you need to cover every time you do one of these blocks. So we're blocking again for the head. This could be from a, a different type of strike. Um, the rising block is good for like a downward strike coming in or even a jab, front hand punch coming at you. It's a quick block. The inward block is more used for say a, a real backhand delivering punch this way or even one that's got a bit of a hook to it. So we bring the hand from here, we come up on this side, and block across to this side. You see that box? Starts on this side of the box, all the way over to here. So when you practice, you should have a mirror or something so you can look at yourself. When you practice, make sure that the arm is covering all the way over. If you're looking at something, you want to see this side of your face. Make sure you're blocking all the way. If you block halfway, well, you're only blocking half your face. So, the block comes up, across, up, across. All right, now watch from the side angle. I bring it up and block. Again, notice that it's out here. I'm not bringing it around my face over to the side. Keep the block in front between you and the bad guy. That's a very good saying to, to memorize here. So, block right there. All right, let's turn this way. So, I've got right foot back. Left hand is forward, that's the hand doing the block for now. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's turn, put the left foot back, right hand is lead, doing the same thing, inward block. One, two, three, four, five, Six. All right, very good. Inward block. Quick review so far. We've done rising, remember rising, coming underneath and up, and inward, across the face. Again, look at the position. Arm is right there, blocking the inside edge of the arm. Now, the other side. Notice how I'm bringing my hand up by my ear, and then I'm rotating it at the end of the at the end of the block. So bring it up, turn it right at the end, and that gives you some extra power. Next one. This is the outward block. Now, for the outward block, primarily we're concerned with that big, huge John Wayne punch coming around. All right, they're, they're bringing this fist from way over here around even for the side of your head. So, with that in mind, with this punch coming around this way, this is what I'm gonna do. Bring the hand up, block outward to meet that blow. Again, this side, across. Now, because that's such a 
a, a vicious blow coming in. I mean, that can build up a lot of momentum. We're going to step away from the strike. So I step out and block. By stepping, I've moved the target a little bit. Hopefully, that would you know, get rid of some of that power that's coming in, get the target out of the way. So we move over, block. Move over, block. All right, now watch from the side angle. There comes that strike around to the side. And I move over, block. Again, see how far away from me it is out in front. Not over to the side, out here in front. Set it up and block. All right, let's do some of these. We're set here, punch coming in. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, switch it over, the left foot back, right hand is now in front, and
One more block. This block is very different from the rest. All the rest of them, we've been basically striking their strike. So a, a good block is one that should stop the fight. I mean, if that thing is coming in and I just boom, blow that, that block out there, I could actually break the opponent's arm. So keep in mind, power blocks are the best. However, <laughs> that said, there are times when you're in the middle of it, you're in the heat of combat, and you're, you're close. It's close proximity fighting, and you're right in the middle of it. They could be throwing a nice short little cross punch coming around this way. So the block we're going to use is called a cover block. Cover block is, is a quick block. It's something that just immediately pow, comes up and covers the side of your head. So as they're throwing that hook, we're coming in, we're blocking, and we've got it covered. Either side, doesn't matter. Of course, you can block any of the blocks either side. Just have to adjust. So, cover block. As the fist is coming up, I lift my shoulder, I drop my chin right into here. So I'm protecting my head right up into that position. It comes up, cover block. Cover block. All right, from this angle, right into there. Cover block. Bring the chin down. Okay, I'm going to show you from the other side just so you can see how it covers up. When it comes in, I cover. Cover. Now some of you are saying, I see a hole. Yeah, okay. Well, the punch coming around from the front. It's not going to sneak in there because the whole arm up here is going to be taking the, the shock of the blow. All right. So let's try that. We're going to turn. Right foot back. All right, hands up. And one, block it up there. Hip, block. Hip, ho, hip, hip. All right, turn around. Other hand, ready. One, hip, hip, ho, hip, hip. All right. Cover block. Those are your blocks. Real quick review. We did the rising block, inward block, outward block, downward block, and the cover block. That's all the blocks on this particular level for level one. Practice them. Blocks are one of the most important things that you can learn because that is self-defense. Somebody's coming in, they're grabbing you, grab you with one hand, choke you, punch you, whatever. You get those blocks down and that'll protect you from being hit. Then the other things that we're going to do later on, the strikes and the kicks and the combinations and all that stuff will make a lot of sense to you because you've already blocked the guy that's trying to come in and land the blow. So next section we'll be going into are hand strikes. Next section, hand strikes. Remember I said about blocks, very, very important. Work on those blocks. Don't skim over them just so you can get to the action part. All right, work on them. Hand strikes, first one we'll cover. This one's called Tiger Claw. Now, I know it sounds like some uh, bad Kung Fu movie, but a Tiger Claw is a very good self-defense tool. When you strike with a Tiger Claw, you need to flatten out the palm of your hands, flat as you can make it. Too many people do something like this. That's more like octopus thing or something, but we're doing tiger claw. So flatten it out. The palm heel hits the chin. The ball of the palm right here, that goes for the nose, and at least one finger is gonna get in the eyes. Now we see Bob here. I do my technique that fits right in there. This is a good training tool to have when you practice. If you don't have a partner or your partner gets tired of you smacking him in the face, Bob here doesn't mind one little bit. So it's just straight in. It's not an upward angle. 
Don't do an upward palm. That's a different thing. This tiger claw goes straight forward. So it's like a thrusting technique. You know, like a good thrust punch just with your hand open right there. So we're going to set it up here in our fighting stance. We've got a right foot back. We're going to strike with the back hand so we can turn the body. You want to pivot your hip and your shoulder a little bit into the strike. So check on the movement of the back leg going right into it. Strike, straight in. Strike. Strike. All right. Turn to the side. From here, strike goes out. I turn in. Notice I'm pivoting up on this foot over here. That's so I can get my hip turned into it. By turning my hip into it, I get more of my body weight into it. Body weight is very important when you're striking an opponent. So you pivot, wah, right straight in. The speed at which you extend the arm is very important. If you're doing everything right and it's about this, that slow right there, all you can do is push his face back a little bit. We're not looking to push him, we're looking to strike. We want impact. So you have to extend your hand quickly and then tighten it up on the end. So it's quick and then tight. So feel the muscles in the tricep and the shoulder right at the end. Tighten up. That's how you lock it into place and you're penetrating through the target. All right. <laughs> We're going to turn this way. Execute a few of them. I'm not going to do it completely straight away because you won't see anything. So I'm going to do a little bit of an angle over here. So this, the striking action is a thrust. Feel the thrust. Here we go. One. inserts, close-ups to, to show you how the strikes are actually done and where you're supposed to focus. I'm going to use Bob here. First one is the tiger claw. When you're doing tiger claw, you want to extend straight in. Remember, the palm heel is going for the chin, then the, the ball of the hand here is going for the nose, and at least one finger, hopefully both of them will get in the eyes. So we're going straight into that area right there. Now it's not an upward strike like this, it's a straight in strike. So you really need to focus on that. So fingers in, hand as flat as you can get it, and strike right in. All right, that's your tiger claw. All right, next thing, inward hammer. All right, first of all, the hammer fist is that part of your hand right here on the bottom. You hammer on the table, you pound on the wall, all of those things. So if you're any, you know, if you're just a normal person and you've been out there doing things and just tapping on the wall or nudging things in where they should go, you've already been using this part of your hand, so it's already conditioned. It's already tough. Uh, we're going to practice it with the back hand, but like everything else, it doesn't matter which hand you use. You learn the technique, you can do it with the front hand, you can do it with the back hand. It all depends on what your physical relationship is at that time to your opponent. Okay? Inward hammer. Set it here. Up to the ear. Straight in on the strike. Up to the ear. In. Now you'll notice, looking at me here, snap. Try to get that. That really adds a lot of power. If not, it's, it's just like picking up a club and just hitting it with it. But when you come in here and you snap it in right at the end, that gives it a lot more force. Okay, it gives it that impact we were talking about. So, set strike. Set strike. All right. At an angle here. Out. Look how far out I have to go. Notice the wrist. You need that wrist to be bent back this way so that it's creating the striking surface here on the hand. I hit Bob. If I don't do that, I'm just going to brush it right by with my knuckles. But as soon as I do it, it reaches out. See the extension there? And that's how you get the strike right into here. 
Now it has a little bit of a follow through on it. You don't stop right on the target. You come in and you go a little bit past the target and that's how you get the, the good effect. All right, so inward hammer. Again, I'm gonna do it at a bit of an angle so you can see where the arm's going. Hands are up, set, good position. One. Again, that's called inward hammer strike, hammer fist. Now we have a lot of target areas that we can use for an inward hammer. You can use it to the temple, right in here. I was aiming for the, the jaw just below the ear. That's a good area to hit because it pops loose and right behind it is a, a very sensitive nerve. So striking into there is a good, a good target. You can uh, use it, of course, straight into the side of the face, on the hinge of the jaw, more right there by, by the teeth. Um, you can also come off to the side and use it to the body. So inward hammer is a pretty uh, versatile tool. Into the ribs, uh, if you get around to the side of the opponent, you can come around and hit over here, the kidney. So, uh, very good. Inward hammer. This is the outward hammer. Now when we're doing an outward hammer, this has even more follow through than the inward hammer. So I set it up here, I'm gonna come over on this side and take it across. This is my striking area right here. Right at the camera, right there. But then I follow through. Follow through on this is, is huge, it's big, it's the biggest thing. Striking Bob, if I just went like that, okay, I could upset his day a little bit. But, when you follow through, now you messed up his week. <laughs> All right, so you think through the target. All right, opposite side, through. Opposite side, through. Okay, you notice the inward techniques and the outward techniques have certain things in common, remember? Inward block, inward hammer, outward block, outward hammer. All right, so they start in the same place so that they can go inward or outward. All right, that'll, that'll help you remember. Outward hammer. All right, again, from the side, cross, comes up, Cross. All right. Here we go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Other side. On the outward hammer, bringing that from here and going out. So we're hitting a lot of the same target areas that you would with your inward. You can go to the, the temple again, the jaw, the side of the head. Uh, you can take it in into the rib cage, offset, solar plexus, down floor into the intestine. All these are good uh, areas for that strike. Um, if you can, you can get it right up into the, the neck or throat area if it's a very dangerous person that you have to deal with. Right into there. All right, next thing. We call them arm strikes, hand strikes, arm strikes, because there's certain parts of your body that you can use. This is not necessarily your fist. We already showed you that. You got the tiger claw. We do the bottom part of the fist on the inward and the outward hammer. And now we're going to use elbows. Of course
course, elbows are used when you're in close. So if the person is attacking, they're lunging at you, and you get past them, you can come in with a good elbow strike. Uh, people coming in from behind you are usually trying to reach around and grab you. Elbows are terrific for that. First one we're going to do is a forward elbow. Now, when I'm thinking forward, I don't want to hook across. That's a different one. You'll learn that one later. All right, this is going forward. So you think all of your energy in one direction on the blow going straight ahead. So from your fighting position, you need to bring that hand back. Cock it back. I even turn my hips a little bit so that when I come into the blow, I can rotate my hips and my shoulder into it. Remember, the rotation of the body adds a lot of power. So you want to keep that in mind. Rotate in. Bring it back. Rotate in. Back strike. Okay, you see that force going this way. Look from the side angle. Bring it back. Forward. Don't hook it. A lot of people do that, and that's not the way to do this particular strike. So, bring it back. Forward. Bring it back. Forward. All right. Right side back. Hands are set. One. middle of the sternum, throat, right to the middle of the nose. Any of those targets are great. It's all about the rotation of the body. If I stand like this, and then I just do an elbow, okay, I moved him. If I do this, okay, I really moved him. <laughs> That's a forward elbow. Powerful, powerful blow. On the elbows, we do forward elbow. Primary target is going to be solar plexus. So I right into the solar plexus. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that's the only place, of course. We also use it, if you remember, on the cover block technique, lunge and coming up into the throat or the face. So your forward elbow, again, is also versatile. If I'm set in a different position here, bring it across into the rib cage. Uh, again, drop it down low into the intestinal area. Also a very good one would be the, the tip of that elbow just driving right into the middle of the sternum. Uh, the sternum can sometimes be very brittle and if it snaps inward, it causes a lot of pain. So the sternum would be a good target as well. So that's the forward elbow. All right. Next, rising elbow. Now, when you think of a rising elbow, we're thinking again, close in fighting. I mean, this guy, he's in there so close, you can feel his breath. He's like hooked you, he's got you by the neck or something like this, you're in there, you're in the clinches, and it's time to really use something right there. Wham! So that strike comes right up underneath the chin, or if their head's down a little bit, right under the nose. If their head's really cocked down into here and they're doing all this, bring that elbow straight up right into the eye socket. Right, it's going to hurt their eyes, it's going to mess up their vision for a while, and quite possibly crack this bone right over the top. So that is a very powerful and effective weapon for close range fighting. And again, like I said before, you know, you can use either one. Also, a lot of people notice that it looks just like the cover block. Well, it does, in some ways, other ways not. We're not going to lift the shoulder as much, we're not going to duck down as much, we're concentrating more on an upward drive of power. So the strike is going under the chin. Coming up, up, up. Okay, you notice Bob's looking at the ceiling every time I hit it. <laughs> so that's a straight up strike going right up under the chin. All right, get your stance. 
Hand comes back. Power up. Back. Up. All right. Side angle. Back. Up. All your force. Feel it going upward, right through here. And up. All right, next. Let's turn face this way. <clears throat> we'll do about six of these. Rising elbow. One. the strike. And All right. That is the rising elbow. Comes underneath. And we're trying to focus right on the chin. So if you're straight on, you bring it straight up underneath. If you're not quite straight on, it can still come underneath the jaw. Uh, and if they're looking downward, you can right it in the face. So it might be worthwhile hitting them into the body first, getting a good shot into there. When they bend over because of that, wham, bring it right up underneath. So anything in that area is a good target for a rising elbow. Very, very devastating blow. All right, when you're practicing it, if you buy yourself a bob or something like that to practice on at home, it's not going to feel real powerful because of the, the glancing blow effect. But when you hit somebody in the face, a person, it, it has a different effect than it does on the bob. Because the, the head snaps, you have uh, damage to the back of the neck. Also, the brain bounces off inside the, the cranium there. And that's what causes most knockouts in boxing, is when your brain bounces around on the walls. So that's your rising. Now, let's say we've got an opponent coming in from behind. I already talked about that a little bit. Maybe I've just done one strike to this guy. Whew, he's falling back. His buddy's right here, just ready to grab me, get right on top of me. I come straight back with his elbow. Straight line. So when you're, when you're practicing this, reach out like you're grabbing onto something out here and pull straight back. So there's two parts, reach, pull. Now, don't think, oh, I'm not gonna have enough time to reach all the way out there before I do the strike, and so I'm just gonna hit him. Let's look at that. <laughs> if I'm just standing here like this, and I just all of a sudden go, eh, come on, what damage are we gonna do? Not much. But if I just reach out here and bring it back, a lot more. Distance is a very important part in the accumulation of power in the human body. So we need to get that distance moving. Then when you do it, do it quickly. So let's reach out and bring it with a strike back. So think in your mind, I'm set, got my position, here he comes right from behind, reach out, strike, set, reach out, strike, sideways, and reach out, strike, reach out, strike. All right, now you notice my other hand, I've got a guard. I'm doing my strike, but I've got a guard hand right here in case Joe Schmo from the front comes back in. I can do another block. So don't let this hand just kind of drop and definitely don't push on this hand. That does not add any power. Matter of fact, it detracts from the power. And anytime both hands are busy doing one thing, your brain can't separate fast enough to say, oh, let go and block. <laughs> it just can't do it. So keep it separate, so you don't have to think about the let go part, just the block part. All right? So we're facing this way. We're going to do the strike directly at the, at the camera. So if you're working with me at the same time at home, straight back. All right, here we go. That's our back elbow. So remember on the elbows, we've done a forward elbow, 
energy going straight ahead. We did the rising elbow, coming under the chin, and we just did back elbow. Okay. All right, now say I've just finished this guy off in the front. Oh, I look back. There's my back elbow. Right into the solar plexus, sternum, if they're coming in, up high into the head. Any, any target is effective. You just need to adjust yourself to that. So whatever the, the bad guy is doing at that time, if you move and set, you can utilize that back elbow. Okay. All right, last one on the strikes for this level, level one. It's called a body punch. On a body punch, it comes around and in. So it's a little bit like an uppercut, except we're taking it in here. We're not going up to the face. It comes in. Watch my hand. I come back, down, in close, and punch, straight line. You want to be in close to your body so that your body is behind the punch. If you do one of these that comes out like this, it's not going to have the same amount of force because it's out here. There's nothing behind your, your blow. So keep it in close and go straight in. Of course, I mean, if, you know, the situation dictates and he's all covered up in the front, hook it around fine. Maybe that'll open him up and you can come in with a good one, right, to the front. So on Bob here, I'm going to hit lighter because I don't want him to go falling over anymore. So I'm going to do this punch, and it goes right into the body. So my hands are here, comes back, and strike. See the circle? Remember what I said on the, on the downward block, how the circle helps build up momentum? Same thing here. It circles back, under, and in. Circle. All right, that blow to the solar plexus, to the lower ribs, or into the small intestine, depending on your position with the back guy, really, really effective. All right, so with me, get that hand set, bring it back, in, punch. Back, in, punch. Side angle, back, in, punch. Back, in, punch. All right, watch the rotation of the body. Whoo! So I'm turning my hips and my shoulders into the strike. All right, here we go. So we're facing this way. Hands are up, right foot back. Other side. So we turn here. Left hand, left foot. Putting that body punch in, remember, circular and strike. Circle and strike. Now that's a straight on shot, very effective. However, off to the side is just as good. We come in, you can, if you're going into the ribs, slight upward angle is always good. All right, that's the body punch. That concludes the hand strikes for level one. All right, the next section we're going into the leg strikes or kicks. Now, I like to call them leg strikes only because we're not just using the foot to kick, we're also using knee strikes. As a matter of fact, that's the first thing we're going into. Front knee or forward knee strike. When we're striking straight forward with the knee, a couple of things you need to think about. Driving the knee are the hips. So we need to get the hips incorporated into the strike. So it's not just standing here and lifting your knee. That's not going to do a whole lot of damage. We need to drive forward. So it comes up and forward at the same time. There's a little bit of a break in there where it's, it's up a little bit more before it goes forward. Otherwise, if you're just bringing it straight up, moving forward, you, you will catch them in the leg or you know, they might have their leg up here like this, catch them in the knee. But if you bring it up and forward, you're going to get over the top of that, you'll be able to come into the target. 
Most people think the only good target for a knee strike like this is the groin. Not so. You get them in the small intestine, which is just above the groin, the little poochy part down there. All right, right in the small intestine, man, you can cause a lot of damage. I mean, the person will drop to the ground, fetal position. A little bit higher up here, right in the middle of the stomach, that's always good, and of course the solar plexus. Now, depending on their position, if you're right in the middle and they turn sideways, do the exact same technique and just drive it right up and into the ribs. Okay, so it's whatever part of their body has turned and facing you at the time. Perfect target, doesn't matter. From the side, bringing the knee up and forward. Okay, you notice when my hips go forward, I have to do a little counterbalance with my upper body. That is an important thing to do. So it comes up, forward. Up, forward. Now, every time I've done that strike, to demonstrate for you, where did I step? Forward. So going in, stepping in. You can see a difference. If I think about stepping back, strike, where did my, my knee only went about this far. But as soon as I know I'm going to step forward, and I drive into it, I extend it. I go out there another good eight inches. So keep that in mind when you're practicing. Going forward, driving through the target. All right. Going off this way, you guys doing them with me? Now, I'm going to do a little angle so my, my knee isn't totally hidden. Ready? One. Noticing something about my hands when I'm doing this. Alright, some of you are going to do the old uh, European sports car hood ornament. <laughs> Woo! Watch out for that. Don't throw your hands back. You want them in front, protecting yourself so when you step in, you're ready if you need to do more. Let's turn to the left side. Again, I'll be at a little bit of an angle. forward knee. Now, when doing your knee strikes, the forward knee is up and forward. Up and forward. Remember to use your hips. This one's called the roundhouse knee. Now, the difference, the biggest difference, is that on the forward knee, everything is moving directly in one straight line, straight ahead, like the forward elbow. Now on this, we're coming around. So even though the opponent is still looking straight at me, I'm not going to hit straight forward. I'm coming around to the side. So if I got Bob, the first knee I did, right there in front, straight ahead, coming up and just... Alright, <clears throat> the other one, roundhouse, coming into the side, up and in. Now a lot of times when you're using this is because you're in close, again it's a close in fight, we've done a couple of elbows, and now we need to put something into the body, you can actually come up and grab them, and come right up at that strike. So we're hooking right up into the, into the rib cage. So when you think about it, look for a 45 degree angle. Coming up and in. Boom. Good way to practice. Just to make sure you're getting your knee in the right place and, and you have something to kind of strike. Put the opposite hand right about where your target follow-through point is. So that when you're bringing it up, pow, now you're feeling, you're feeling if you're putting a strike in there, if you're just kind of lifting it. So opposite hand, right knee, left hand, bang, comes up, sharp, 
Alright, so from a side angle, up, bam, do it from this angle. See the angle coming up, 45, right up into the ribs. Alright, here we go. Facing off, right foot back. Hey. side in order to come up here into the ribs. Next thing, let's say we're into it, we're into the combat. We've done a couple of elbows, maybe a couple of knees, really drop them right down to the ground. Now, once they hit the ground doesn't mean the fight's over. From the ground, he could be thinking of ways of, you know, getting back up, grabbing your leg, trying to sweep you, take you down. Fight's still on, unless he's out. So, what we want to do is keep him on the ground. So, this technique is called a heel stomp. I bring my leg up high, drive down. Up, down. Now, when you practice, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm trying to keep my heel about two inches off the floor. Down. Don't hit the floor. The reason for that, if you go down and you hit the floor, you're never going to practice extending your leg all the way because you keep banging it into the floor. Also, you hurt yourself. We don't want you to hurt your heel and come back and say, hey man, you made me break my heel. Keep it two inches off the floor so that you always go to full extension. So you want to go down, tighten up your leg muscles. Top, back, rear end, all of your leg muscles. Tighten them up right on the end. That way you're sure you penetrate. Now, if you do that, and every time you go to that point, boom, when you practice, then when you have a real bad guy and you've done whatever, and he's on the ground, and now you have to keep him down, your foot is going to go to that two inches off the floor position. Now, I don't know any body, any person, that you can throw down and they're only about two inches off the floor. Everybody is more than that. So if they're in there and they've got this much off and you penetrate to that two inch point, you just did a lot of damage to that guy. That's the point of this. That's the purpose of this kick. So it's up high and down. So think about bringing your knee up higher than your belt level. So it comes up, down. It comes up, down. All right. Now this one, because of the particular angle, I'm really going to do it at almost a sideways position so you can really see the extension of the leg. All right, here we go. One. And you can step back on this one. You don't have to step into it because you're still extending your leg all the way. Hip, stomp. other side. Alright, that particular heel stomp is a forward heel stomp. Now in level two you'll learn other other heel stomps to different directions. Forward heel stomp to the head, to the sternum, solar plexus, the intestine, into the groin, the hip joint, 
and the knee. Heel stone. Very effective. All right, this next kick is called a thigh kick. Now, um, if you ever watch Muay Thai kickboxing, and they're all in there and they're doing their kicks, most of their kicks are to the leg, right in the thigh. They're either going for the outside edge, if you take your knuckle and kind of poke right on there, you'll feel the nerves are pretty exposed. Other target is to the inside edge. Okay, in here it's hard to uh, really build the muscles up to withstand the blow. Also, kicking out against the leg uh, could cause damage to the hip joint, pop it out maybe. So the, both of those are good uh, target areas. Right on the outside, right on the inside. When you're doing this uh, thigh kick, you want your foot to come around in a very circular path. So the knee starts by coming out, travels around, kick. So right on the end of the kick, you want your leg to go tight, straight. So it's around, kick. Now, if I do it straight at the camera, I want you to watch where my leg ends up. Around, kick. So you see, I wasn't kicking just right here to the edge. Where did I go? All the way through, trying to get follow through. Follow through is very important on this kick. If you just kick them on the leg, no big deal. But if you kick and drive, you can actually knock them right down on the ground, set them up for that heel stomp. All right, here we go. Bringing the, uh, the knee out to the side and around into the target. One, bam, right to there. Now I want you to step in because on the kick itself, watch my hip. Wah! See, I'm throwing my hip into the kick. More power. And around, kick. All right, from the side angle. Around. Now, let's uh, move this guy down a little bit. Now that's about thigh level. So when I do the kick, out, in, right here, right to the side. So I'm going for that side of the leg. Out and in. The leg goes straight. Alright. Let's do this one together. So the kick around and in. Um, I'm going to do it at a little bit of an angle here. There we go. One. that area so that when you hit oh, you're going to cave them in. 
angular, 45 degrees, like the, uh, the roundhouse knee. All right, so this is like that. So it's coming up just like I'm going to do that roundhouse knee, a little farther away from the guy. Come up and kick. All right. Watch the turn of the body. Comes up and kick. It helps get power on this kick if you bring this hand back right when you're doing the kick. See that rotation right there. Work on that. Here we go. Comes up and kick. Keep those hands up. Up and kick. All right, now from a side angle. Again, that angle. Up, kick. Kick. So if I'm hitting Bob, there's his ribs. Up at an angle. And kick. Right up into the ribs. Really devastating kick. So, let's see, we're going to do this one at, a, at an angle here. So I'm going to be kicking over here so you can see where the foot ends up. All right, hope that's a good angle. Here we go. One, kick. Two. Three. Pull. Hit. Hit. All right, to the left leg. So we're bringing it up. Angular. Ready? Again, that's the rib kick. Now, next one. This is the front kick. We're facing straight on. Now, remember the front knee? How we had to drive in with the hip? Arch back a little bit? Same thing here. What we want to do is get the foot up first pretty much on, on level with the target. So it's up and out. So don't just lift it and stick it out there. It's not a good way to kick. We're trying to kick in a straight line. So it's up and out. All right, now, from side, up first, out. Up and out. So you see that extension of the hip going into the kick. And up, out. So if I'm kicking Bob, it comes up and straight in. So it's hitting straight line into the target. All right, so that's the front kick. Tell you what, let's do it this way too. Up, out. Extension of the hip. Up, out. All right, let's turn. All right, do some with me. Here we go. Hands are up. Good, good uh, fighting position. And one thrust. And remember, we're stepping forward. Why do we step forward? Momentum. Go through the target. Hip thrust. Hip. Hop. Hip. Hip. All right, let's get the other side. Straight out. Hip thrust. Again, that's the front kick. Aiming for the solar plexus if you can, right in there, ball of the foot. Bobs are fun. You can really punch that guy. All right. Our next kick is called the arch kick. Now. A lot of people get mixed up on the parts of the foot. The arch, obviously, is the arched part. All right, so it's right inside. It's between the heel and the ball of the foot. We're actually going to be hitting with that part of the foot, right there, the arch of the foot. And we're going for the knee. 
This kick is effective anywhere on the knee. Um, just keep in mind, different points of attack are going to create um, more severe damage. If you take the strike right to the back of the knee, it'll cause it to bend violently and probably take them down to the ground. If it goes to the side of the knee, then you're doing well, a similar damage as you would get if you played football and you get clipped in the side. Okay, you can do some pretty good damage to the knee. If they're facing straight on and you just drive that right there to the front of the knee, you're talking about bending it back like a stork. So that's a lot of damage on there. You can actually break the knee, cause the, the kneecap, the patella, to drive right through the joint. So it could cause um, permanent damage. So you make sure in your mind that if you're using this technique, if you're going straight on, this guy deserves it. All right, you don't want to do it to some guy that just had a couple too many drinks, you know, and you just want to put him down and, you know, control him. Work your way around, get it to the back of the knee, put it down that way, control the guy. There's plenty of ways to move around a person. And we'll cover those here in the second half of this uh, instructional DVD. All right, so this kick, arch kick. It's right out here in front of me. I'm going to cock the leg up and drive it out. So it's going in. Look, look at the angle. I've got to have my body kind of contorted here in order to do this kick. So I'm not twisting with it because that would change the part of the foot that I'm going to hit with. I have to keep my foot turned as sideways as I can. So when I'm kicking with my right foot, I want my toes to be pointing off to the right. And it was up and kick. Again, up, kick. Let's do a sideways. In at this angle, kick. Kick. All right, let's do it here. Same thing, watch the angle. Right in there. So you see my body has to do a little bit of a lean, extend, and put that kick in. All right, let's go through a bunch of these, okay? Six of them kicking right off here. Again, I'm not going to face straight away from you because you can't see the leg. A little bit of an angle, so follow me on this. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's turn. Other side, and left foot back. And one. Now, see right now I'm doing the kick and stepping back. One of the reasons for that is I'm thinking in my mind, I'm not trying to do ultimate damage. If I was really going for it, then drive and just step in. That would shatter the leg. Alright, so again, the name of that kick? Arch kick. Next kick. This is called the field goal kick. And it's just what it looks like. All right, you probably watch a little football or soccer or something. And the kick is going to come right up and follow through. So, because of that, before you start working on this one, make sure that you do a little bit of a frontal stretch here. You want to stretch out this back part of your leg. So you go forward and just go down, stretch, 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 get down there as low as you can. This is a complete follow-through kick. Usually, this will be used if the person has already been taken down and they're, they're bent over and the head is right about here. We're going to use this for a finishing blow. So if that's their head, I'm coming up, I'm going to kick it, whap, and just go right on through. So what we're hoping for is a big smack all the way over and have them land over there someplace. All right, so <clears throat> when you're bringing it up, there's going to be a little bit of a bend to the knee right in the beginning just to get past the floor and you know anything that might be in the way. So a little bend and then it just straightens right up and goes right up through. So you're thinking in your mind, it'll go old score. All right, let's do that at an angle. Again, imagine the person bent over, here's their head. So we come up and kick. 
Nice follow through. All right, let's do that. Again, I'm going to stand a bit of an angle here so you can still see my leg. All right, do these with me. Can you stand? Right foot back, hands up. Field goal kick. One, kick. Two, kick. All right. Three, four, five, six. Okay, let's turn. Here with the other leg. Field goal kick. Now we've covered your front knee going forward. We did your roundhouse knee into the ribs. We did your heel stomp, thigh kick. We did that 45 angle, remember going up rib kick. We did front kick up and out. We did arch kick. And we did field goal kick. All right, so that covers all of the leg strikes or kicks for level one.